Hi and welcome to another Unity 3D tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create an animation mask so that you can play two animations at once where one part of the character's body plays one animation and the other part plays another animation. So to begin with I've got a really simple project set up and I've downloaded this free female warrior princess character which has a whole bunch of animations on it and I've put her into the scene. What I've also done is actually stripped out all of the animators that come with it and created my own animator. So that animator I've called Warrior. Let's just have a look at it. So here it is here and I've set it up to run the combat idle animation and a combat run animation. Now if I run this You'll see that she starts out in the idle and I can use the arrow key to move her around. She's probably running a little bit fast there, but you can control that in the script. So I'll just show you what's in that particular script. The code that's attached to the player is called player controller. And this code is pretty much the same as the other code I've used in my other animation tutorials for moving things around on the screen. And that includes characters um, which are humanoid and also cars. In this case, we're moving a humanoid character around and we're using our vertical and horizontal axes here. So the up and down arrow keys will move the character forward and backwards in a translation and the left and right arrow keys will move the character in a rotation. Now those two values are then multiplied by delta time. They're also multiplied by a speed and a rotation speed value at the top here, which are set at variables at the top. And as I said before, it's probably moving a little bit too fast. So you could actually just dial that value down there if you wanted to. Now this code I've been using with some networked characters. So I'm actually moving the rigid body around of the character itself. So therefore I've got the rigid body here and I'm using a move rotation on it to actually rotate it around. And as far as the animation itself goes, um, the translation I should say, is that the translation is moving based on the actual animation itself. So when the character's uh, root motion moves because of the animation, the character moves. So you'll see that there's no actual translation added as a translate function anywhere in here. Then we've also got this little if statement here that's testing for the translation value. If it's not equal to zero, then it must mean that the player is pressing the up or down arrow keys and making a translation value. So in the case that it's not equal to zero, we're going to set this boolean value of idling to false which will trigger the idling animation and then in the other case we will set the boolean to true which means we will be actually moving. Now to show you where those things are being activated let's just go back to here the transition from idle to run which is this one here we go over to the inspector, you'll see that idling has been set to false. So when idling is set to false, this will fire and take us into the run. And then we go back again with this arrow, idling is true. Now you can see at both of those that the has exit time has been removed. Okay, so he will immediately move and he will immediately stop. Now if we just go back to the player and have a look at the setup of the animator, you can see that I've got apply root motion ticked, which will force the character to actually move with its animation movement. So that's important if you're going to follow along and use this actual script. Now one more thing is we have a speed multiplier value. So up in the parameters in the animator window, I've selected the plus button and added a float which is our speed molt. This speed molt is going to get applied to the run animation here and if we just go over to the inspector for that run you can see that the speed has set to one and it also has a speed multiplier which is this speed molt value. 
Now that speed malt value, you might have noticed back in the code, is affected just here. So the translation, the amount of translation, is also telling the animation how fast to run. So as the character speeds up, the running animation will also speed up. Okay, so let's have a look at the other animation that we want to blend with the idle and the run. And that's the attack animation that comes with the uh, Warrior Princess. I'm just going to drag this into the existing animator and I will set it to the default so that we can see what it is. Okay, so there it is. It's a looped attack animation. Now currently she won't be able to be idle and attacking and running and be attacking at the same time uh, because they're different animations. So we could blend them together um, but that kind of gives you sort of the full blend of one animation and the other for all the, all the body parts. And it's actually quite easy just to do it with layers and create animation masks. So I'm going to remove this from here and we'll just go back to the idle one as the default. So the first thing we need to do is go to the layers in the animator window and you'll see you've got a base layer already there. We're now going to add a new layer and we'll call that the attack layer. Okay, so in that attack layer, if you click on the little cog next to it to get the settings, you'll see that there's a weight. This is how much you want the animation that you put in this layer to affect the character. And then you also have a mask that you can apply. Now let's start by adding in that attack into this layer. Okay, so notice we're in a different layer. We're not in the base layer. There's two different ones there. So now when we press play, we're going to get this attack layer running at the same time as the idle. Okay, so we can see there that we've got the idle animation. Now if we just go to the attack layer, and have a look in the settings for it there's this weight now you can apply more if we apply like one which is all of it over the top and then we can dial it back a little bit as well and now you can see that you've kind of got a bit of the attack and a bit of the idle now the same thing if we just leave it like that and we actually move our character around and run she'll kind of look like she's trying to attack and run at the same time because it's blending those two things together for us. But then if we go back to attack and put our weight right back up to one and move the character with the arrow keys, which I'm trying to do now, nothing's happening because the attack is now at full weight and therefore it hasn't had any influence over the legs whatsoever. Ideally, what we want is to apply just the attacking animation to the upper half of the body and to leave the legs to be the idle and the run state so that she can be idle and attacking with her upper body or she can be running and attacking with her upper body. Now, if you go back to the attack settings, you'll see that there's this mask for an avatar mask. This is where we can actually control which parts of the body are affected by the animation. So if we go down to Project Create, we can create a new avatar mask. Now, this is off the screen for you, but if you just go down through this list, there's an avatar mask. Create a new one, and then you'll get it there. We're going to call this the attacking avatar mask. Now, this avatar mask... When you select it, over in the inspector, it has this uh, humanoid part. And if you drop that down, you'll get a little diagram of the body. And here you can actually select which bits that the animation is going to affect. So in this case, we want the attacking to do the upper body, which means we want to turn off the legs and we'll turn off the IK as well, like that so that the attacking only has an influence over the top part of the body. So anything that's green is where it will be applied to. 
Now all we need to do is go back to the animator and set our mask up here to be our attacking one that we just created. Okay, and we can also set the weight to be one because we want it fully attacking on the top. And because the legs are still free, they will do the idle or um, the running. So let's go and play this and have a look at what we've got. So there's our attacking. She's looking pretty nasty, isn't she? So she's attacking at the top and in idle and she can run forward and be attacking like that as well. Now, let's say you don't want her attacking constantly and you only want her to attack when, say, the space bar is pressed. This layer currently goes straight into the attacking and there's nothing else there. So to put in a little sort of holder state, we can create an empty state. And this state here, which actually doesn't have anything in it, we can set that to the default state. And then the attack won't happen until we control it to. So we can make a transition to the attack and we'll also make a transition back as well. And then on here, we can set a trigger that will trigger when we press the space bar, for example. So let's go back to parameters and we'll create another trigger and let's call it attacking. And we'll put that trigger onto this transition from our nothing state to our attacking. So select the transition and come over here and we'll go and put attacking in there. Okay, now the only other thing you need to do to make this work is actually put some code in that will register when you press the spacebar. So just underneath all these other translations, we're going to put in this code here. So if input.getKeyDown is space, then animator.setTrigger attacking. And that will then trigger this attacking over here in the animator, which will cause that transition which is here to occur. So I'll just save that and switch back into Unity. Let's play it and see what happens. So when we play we should just be in the idle state and when we move that's all good and then we press the spacebar the attack plays. That's how to use these layers for blending um, and using animation masks on your characters to put two different animations together and to control them in those different layers. Now, if you're interested in learning more about animation right from scratch, I've got a Udemy course that you can go and check out. And anyone who has subscribed to Patreon with me will also have access to the source files for this particular exercise. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. There was a lot in there and there was a lot of assumed knowledge as well that I have covered in previous tutorials. So if you're not quite up to this point with animation and the Mechanim system, then I do uh, urge you to go back and have a look at earlier tutorials and also check out my Udemy course, uh, which will take you right from scratch on how to actually set up these animations and work with different characters.